Tonight I'd like to talk about myocardial oxygen supply and what are the main factors that go into determining how much oxygen the myocardium sees. This is important because a lot of the considerations we have, particularly for cardiovascular conditions, really this is the physiology that impacts how we give an anesthetic to these patients by figuring out what their the balance between myocardial oxygen supply and demand is. Tonight we're going to talk about supply. There'll be another video about myocardial oxygen demand at a later date. What are the main factors? There really are three broad kind of categories to think about it. Number one is how much oxygen is actually in the blood that's getting to the heart. And that's our oxygen carrying capacity. Number two is how much blood is actually getting to the heart. So what's the coronary blood flow? Number three is how much time does this blood that's getting to the heart have to actually perfuse the myocardium? And we'll see uh, that there's a few things that go into each of these. So the oxygen carrying capacity, really the, the basics here is how much hemoglobin do you have? So what is your hemoglobin level? You can imagine if somebody's anemic, there's less hemoglobin to carry oxygen, less oxygen in the blood, lower oxygen carrying capacity, and that myocardium is going to see less oxygen delivered. That one's pretty simple to understand. A bit more complicated is coronary blood flow. So we know that flow is proportional to pressure and inversely proportional to resistance. So what is our pressure or coronary perfusion pressure? Well, it's essentially we we know that the coronary arteries are perfused during diastole um, and they're perfused backwards from the aorta. So essentially our perfusion pressure is aortic pressure in diastole minus the left ventricular pressure in diastole. And this makes sense because we know that the coronary arteries flow from the aorta down through the wall of the heart and the, the end pressure um, is going to be in the ventricle at the, at the end of diastole. So this is the equation. And so you can imagine this is essentially our diastolic pressure, which in a normal person is, let's say, in a normal person, let's say 80 as in 120 over 80, and our left ventricular pressure at the end of diastole is usually 10. So that means our coronary perfusion pressure is 80 minus 10, 70. And, and so you can see if we impact, if we drop our diastolic pressure, we're going to be decreasing the perfusion pressure of our coronary arteries and thus potentially decreasing our myocardial oxygen supply and upsetting the balance between oxygen supply and demand within the myocardium. Resistance is another factor here, and this explains why we're only perfusing our coronary arteries during diastole. So you can imagine during systole, when the ventricle is contracting, <clears throat> that left ventricular pressure goes up, or the resistance to flow in those vessels goes up to the point where those vessels are essentially squeezed off and there isn't going to be any myocardial oxygen supply or blood flow. Um, there are also a number of intrinsic vascular factors that can result in constriction of the blood vessels. Uh, we won't get into those uh, as they're not a huge factor, but it's important to think that the diameter or radius of the coronary vessels can affect resistance as well. Our third major category is time, and this is essentially affected by the heart rate. So as we know from before, the coronary arteries are perfused during diastole. Um, and in each cardiac cycle, the time in systole is constant. You can imagine it takes the heart a certain amount of that cardiac cycle to beat. Um, so what varies depending on the heart rate is the time in diastole. So if you have an increased heart rate, then you have less diastolic time. And you can imagine that you have less time for the blood flow here to actually perfuse the myocardium and deliver oxygen to the tissue that needs it. Um, so heart rate is a major factor, and as we'll see, it acts on the demand side as well. So those are the basics of myocardial oxygen supply.